Dwight have Jose uh, Figueroa? Amazing. Jose Perfect. Okay. Yeah. And your son Jose with us today. Um, thank you for coming to speak on uh, Canada's immigration policy. Um, and uh, we'll have a chance to talk and so on. We're going to start, um, I don't know if you knew or have seen already, uh, a TED talk, which Jose did probably a year and a half ago or so. I know, uh, last November. But, okay, so just a year ago. And, um, and so we'll start with that. It's about 16 minutes. And then we'll have conversation until around 6 o'clock or so. I think that right now I am under a big pressure right now because uh, about this talk, the life of my family is at stake and the life of many other people. And I gotta do the same. So I am not a professional speaker, so please uh, bear with me. My name is Jose Figueroa. I am from El Salvador. Every country has the right, and I would say, not only their right, but the obligation to respect the, to defend their citizens against terrorism. But in, at the same time, I would say they have the obligation to respect innocent people that are being characterized as terrorists. Thank you, Pastor. Well. I think that still uh, uh, the effect of, of that speech, still, I still feel it. And uh, you know, uh, at that time, uh, my feelings were, I had to, to hide so much of my feelings because for over two years, they have been kind of being on, on the way to send a clear message. You know, for me, TEDx, it was a wonderful experience in the sense that we could put much of the of the of our thoughts in order to make people understand what's going what was what is going on with the immigration uh, problems uh, for over two years now this has been only on the shoulder of my family but uh, somehow i believe that and i naturally believe that somehow god has has made this happen so something that can be done not only for my family but for many other families it doesn't matter where they come from or what their political or ideological situation is the immigration law as it is stated right now it threatens their 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 lives it becomes the immigration law kind of a of a lottery it will depend who is assessing the your an immigration file a CBSA who are in, in charge of those so that your, the chances of an immigrant to stay here in Canada will depend on one person. If that person it has uh, some biased uh, information about the political or social situation in a particular country, those will be the chances of somebody. And that is wrong. So. I just wanted to make this a little bit like this, but I think that we would work better if we can. Uh, you just saw the video, and uh, I think that it explains it broadly, but there's so much information that needs to be shared, and we need to get the community together. We have been going, uh, uh, trying to join people from different churches. Even when we were in, uh, in Montreal, uh, in Toronto, I mean, I met uh, some people from the uh, seven, uh, the seven, uh, yes, and and they provided us with so much information on this situation, and uh, we have been gathering information from people from different denominations, and uh, we want just to share and hear your opinions and see what we can do together uh, in. January 2011, we launched the We Are Jose campaign. You will see this. 
this light. So we launched the We Are Jose campaign. Uh, this this campaign came up after uh, we talked to some students at uh, uh, the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. Uh, we spoke about the, the issues with immigration. <coughs> at that time, we didn't know so much, but little by little, we have been gathering so much information. And uh, <coughs> a student came up with the idea, oh, why don't we launch this campaign and gave us a, a structure. The moment she said this, I said, no, let's do this. And that's how We Are Jose started to, to become our, our main instrument to, to get to more people. And uh, I think that uh, right now, uh, where we are standing at is the Minister of Public Safety and the Minister of Immigration, they have to make a decision right now on two applications. And you will see what, one thing. The Minister of Public Safety has to decide on an application called Ministerial Relief, or is it the exemption, which is based on Section 34.2 of the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act. But statistically, the Minister of Public Safety could take seven to nine years to decide on that, on that application. And so far, they have been just dragging their feet into making a decision on that. The other decision that is pending is a, 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 a decision by the Minister of Immigration, uh, and that is based on Section 25.1 of the Immigration uh, Law, uh, that it has to, uh, uh, the, it's called the An Agency Application, a Humanitarian and Compassionate Grounds Application. And that, and that was approved in principle in the year 2004. What that meant is that the, uh, that application for Asian C became an application for permanent residence. And the only thing that we needed to uh, do on that, and actually that was a process that supposedly was, uh, was only to take place within nine months. That was in 2004. And what, what is the year frame now? That, 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 that's, that's a fairly violation of human rights in, in my family. At that time, uh, when we applied for that application, that had cost us a, over, over $5,000 to present that application. And well, when they gave us that, that resolution, that approved in principle, uh, we were happy that uh, well, we were finally going to get our, our status here in Canada. Yet, that didn't happen, and that it was being dragged for so long. At that time, we, we thought that it was because uh, of the immigration backlog of, of, of cases and that, that it was slow. But we waited patiently for that to happen. Yet, in 2009, as we said in there, we heard about this immigration issue, uh, the admissibility hearing. We were, uh, we were called for a, a, a pre-hearing, in order, in a, a CBSA officer had made a report to the to the to the minister. That report is based on Section 44 of the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act. What simply said is, a CBSA looked at this. He said if he was a member of FMLN in a very uh, uh, what would we say plain way. Say FMLN. Uh, we're fighting against a, 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 a government, FMLN, as a terrorist organization. He was a member, so he's inadmissible. That's the simple logic they arrive into this. And that's a very rhetorical way of, of looking at the situation. Yet, th that, that is the problem that we are looking at this. I'm going to leave this uh, up to here. Maybe you guys, so that we can uh, develop a little bit of a, of a chat about this situation. Uh, some doubts that you might have on what you hear on this and uh, that, that way we're going to start building a little bit of, of uh, what can we do in order to solve this problem. So uh, feel welcome to ask questions. Uh, uh, last year my son and I hitchhiked from Langley to Ottawa wow. <laughs> in order to raise awareness on this situation. Wow. And uh, uh, out of that we, we got in contact with thousands of Canadians. 
My son and I, we wear it like this, because they want the, these blacks, they were, they were, they, they, uh, we, we left uh, uh, Vancouver uh, with nothing. Uh, part of the original plan for us was to, his, uh, to rent a van, put the We Are Jose logo, and go to cities and uh, talk about this issue. We couldn't raise the money to do that. But I have said, you know, if, even if we have to hitchhike, we are going to do that. And we did that. In, in, we, it, it didn't cost us a penny. Why? Because people that we encounter on the road, they heard our story and they understood and they helped us to move from city to city. And they even provided us with a, with a place to stay for uh, the trip. <laughs> Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, no, you're so fancy.